Don't encrypt your email for your goodness' sake. Article dictated and written by Mark of Orpier and all copyrights to myself, Mark of Orpier also. You might have heard of quantum computers. You might not have, but chances are you have. No doubt the same story of other dimensions and science fiction. Quantum computers don't use other dimensions. They do use the complex behavior of subatomic particles to conduct amazing real-world calculations, including cryptology that defeats public key encryption with some notable ease. In fact, there is only one encryption method. However, the message that is transmitted is sent. That is impossible to decode if encoded properly and utilizing random numbering, but not the public key type. Is this quantum quagmire important? No. Well, admittedly, yes. Since Prism, Badley's, Google now have their own quantum computer to calculate things like how to read a Google user's mind or get the drug patents for some exotic disease first. Lockheed Martin, who make the aircraft Western powers used to undermine whoever has upset them last week. Yes, that Lockheed Martin, the largest defense firm in the planetary region, have one too. Public key encryption, which uses the fact that prime numbers such as 3 or 7 cannot be square rooted, is pretty much useless against quantum computing, which has a pasha for such things. Also useless, all the other methods come up with by human beings, with the exception of one Russian technique, the only encryption method I have always considered as secure. If you do encrypt your email, even in a field such as mine, the legal field, then you paint a red marker on your usage. The tyrannous powers of the powers of world espionage are not there to be trifled with. If you're not utterly certain you're safe, chances are you aren't. Russia, despite its prowess, uses typewriters to record all of their most secure information. I personally use longhand, at least these days. Back to encryption. Unencrypted emails tend to pass through the system. In South Africa, all emails are stored permanently by providers for the government. But even then, they are mostly safe in the same way one wildebeest in a migration across the Serengeti has safety on its side. Yes, it is vulnerable, but it acts like every other wildebeest. It does not draw attention to itself. Encryption means you are a target. Unless, of course, your encryption is impossible to decipher, even with a quantum computer. In the legal field, we still generally use the physical courier services that many have waylaid. But with our clients, we often communicate by email and by telephonic means. I've suggested that robotic drone technology is approaching a point where technology can be averted altogether and a drone used in lieu of a physical courier for everyday usages, with longhand messages of course. If the major software manufacturers are working with the espionage infrastructure, then chances are everything on your internet connected digital device is already vulnerable. Russia understands this. The one method of encryption that is impossible to decrypt without the key on the other side was named the one-time pad system. Yes, it is the system which appears in my spy novel based on the apartheid spy 
versus spy real life stories I was told as a child. In my book, I just so happened to use inventive ideas, such as the use of DNA. I would not do so in the modern world. DNA is too easily accessed these days. One time pad encryption relies on the constitution of a truly random string of digits, which are used to transform and only once transform another string of communication. Let us use the random string. It is not really random of zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, three, zero, four, zero, five. Let us encode a message with it. Mark is encrypting. So to use the classical Russian method, we write as one word, Mark is encrypting. Then each letter is substituted with a number. Let us say A equals 1, B equals 2. So M equals 13, A equals 1. R equals 18, C equals 3. I equals 9, S equals 19. E equals 5, N equals 14, C equals 3, R equals 18, Y equals 25, P equals 16, T equals 20, I equals 9, N equals 14, G equals 7. So we have 13, 0, 1, 18, 0, 3, 0, 8, 19, 0, 5, 14, 0, 3, 18, 25, 16, 20, 0, 9, 14, 0, 7. And we add these with our random numbers. So we add 0, 0 to 13, 11 to, 1, to 0, 1, 22 to 18, 33 to 0, 03, 44 to 0, 09, and so forth. And we get 13, 12, 40, 36. 53, 74, 71, 91, 91, 17, which is the mod by 100 of 117, 26, 18, 23, 18, and 12, giving us this combination of numbers. This is sent to sound with a one time pad of, say, 0011, 2233445566677889. 0102030304 They then reverse the process we followed. For instance, 13 minus 00, 0 is 13, which is M. 12 minus 11 is 1, A. 40 minus 22 is 18, R. 36 minus 33 is 3, and so forth. Suddenly we have a message, only the receiver can read, which is Mark is encrypting one word, which can then be given spaces either randomly or according to some encrypted message on spacing and capitalization using the same technique, using the same technique that is. So say Mark space is space encrypting, with a capital for the M of course. The problem is with random order and reuse. If you program a system to create random numbers, most languages just use a public key system which isn't random. Here I likewise used a system purposely not random. The repeated digit was due to a typing error, where I skipped a letter in manually encrypting and was too lazy to redo those after it. But if I used that code, I could never reuse it. The Russians began reuse of one-time pads during the Cold War, which allowed Americans to decrypt those messages. Time pad prior to the public key system, which latter is safe, 
given the many years a current PC takes to decode it. Used to be the standard for corporations for internal communications. With quantum computing and supercomputers spying on everyone with such success, it's perhaps time to return to the only sure method. How you generate a truly random number without relying on public key shortcuts and square roots of numbers which cannot be square rooted is up to you. Article dictated by Mark of Aupier. Article written by Mark of Aupier. Article copyright Mark of Aupier. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoyed this article. My name is Mark of Aupier and obviously I wrote, dictated and hold the copyright to this entire presentation. Good day.